Hello parents of St John's, I'm going to be talking today about reading at St John's and how we teach reading. You will have noticed that there's been lots of um, videos posted about phonics and the teaching of phonics to children at the start of their reading journey. But I just wanted to do another video to show you how that kind of continues throughout school really. So when children are learning to read there's two different aspects to it. There's reading the words, so can your child read the words that are on the page? We call that decoding. Can they look at a word, sound it out, find out what the word is so that you can read fluently without stopping, without breaks, without pauses? So that's one aspect of reading. Children learn to do that during their time in reception and year one and we want them to be confident in decoding and be fluent, which again means without reading without pausing by year two. So by the time they come to year three, we'd expect them to be quite confident readers. So that's one aspect of reading. The other aspect of reading, which is a bit more complicated and complex, is understanding what you've read, a child understanding what they have read. And we call that comprehension. So you've got the reading the words, decoding, and then we've got understanding what's being read, comprehension. So as I said, the decoding part comes early on in a reading journey, but it's still ongoing throughout school. It's still something that we keep ticking along. In year one, and we do simple comprehension tasks, but mainly in year one, the comprehension journey starts where children are asked really easy, simple find it questions about what they've read. And you'll find lots of the Oxford reading tree books that we send home have lots of examples of questions that you can ask your children once they've read certain pages to build up their comprehension skills. But there's many other things that we do at St John's to help your child build up their comprehension skills and really understand what they're reading. We do that to make them lifelong readers because they'll need this comprehension skills as they go into the wider world, as they go through secondary school, possibly college and university. Comprehension is a really key skill. Comprehension is also something that comes into everyday life, whether you're reading something or not. It's about understanding kind of hidden meanings and messages from things. So it's a lifelong skill, but it's also something that is tested in the statutory tests that children sit in year two and that they sit in year six. We also do informal assessments every year that your child is at school to test their comprehension skills and to find out what we need to work on next. So the next bits of information that I'll be talking about are all about comprehension. How do we teach children at St John's to understand what they've read? Now, the first, we teach this through two different ways. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is something called active reading. And the second thing I'm going to talk about is vipers. These are the two main things that we follow at school to get your children really confident with comprehension. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is active reading. I've drawn a little picture here because I think visuals just really help you differentiate and understand between the, the two different kind of models that we follow. So active reading is what children are encouraged to do in the moment of reading, so as they're reading something on a page. This is surface reading. What are they doing on the very surface as they pick up a book and read? I'm going to go into more detail about active reading now, but I just wanted you to be clear that it's what you're doing on the surface before we dive deeper using vipers. So this is called active reading. It's to do within the moment a child picks up a book, what are they doing on the surface as they're reading a text? So what do I mean by active reading? If a child reads passively, which is the opposite to reading actively, so if they're reading passively, they will read the words on the page, so they'll be able to decode the words, they'll be fluent, so they won't pause much, and they'll seem like really good readers. But if they're passive, it means they're not thinking as they're reading, they're just reading out loud. We have all had that moment where you're reading something, and afterwards you think, do you know what, I haven't taken any of that in, I've been thinking about something else and I haven't taken in what I've read on that page and as an adult you go back and read it. That's reading passively. 
If you read passively, it means you're not connecting what you've read. It means you're not thinking about those hidden meanings in what you've read. It means you're not stopping at words that you don't quite understand. It means you're not thinking ahead to what might happen next. It means that you're not um, asking yourself questions as you read of why certain things are happening. And it means that you're not painting those images in your mind of what might be happening in the story. So that's if you're a passive reader. So we try and teach children at St John's to be active readers. That means as they're reading, they're reading the words, so they're decoding and they're understanding, but they've got lots of things that are going in, on inside their brain as they're reading. Now to teach this, adults have to model it to the children because children just don't know that that's what you do in your brain as a really good reader. So we have to teach them that. We use some little sticks, active reading sticks. Teachers use these, teaching assistants, and children use these whenever we're reading a text out loud. So that might be as a whole class, it might be as a small group, it might be in pairs. Any time that we're reading something out loud and it's a time for discussion about what we're reading, we use these sticks. I'm going to go through each of these sticks and what they mean because each one is an active reading skill, so something that we want children to be thinking about as they're reading. Okay, so they've opened up their book, they're reading it as a small group together. As we read through the paragraphs, we might have these in the middle of the table and children will hold up something when they've thought of something or children might have them in little pairs so they can hold up each different skill as it pops into their head or a teacher might use them to show children what they're thinking. That's a really important part of the process. So this one, it's a thought bubble. We use this one to show any questions that might pop into our head as we're reading or any thoughts or ideas that pop into our head as we're reading. So just for an example, I might read something where the story talks about a seaside location. So I would hold this up and I'd say to the children, oh, do you know what that makes me think of? It makes me think of a time when I went to the beach. It was a really hot sunny day in Cornwall and it was that type of day where you sit on the beach and have an ice cream and relax in the sun. I'm telling children what I'm thinking as I would be reading that bit of information to show children that that's what they need to do to make connections to other things as they're reading. I might read something where the character finds a magic door and they know that the door is magic because the door handle's glowing. So a question might pop into my head and I might say, I wonder why that door handle's glowing. I wonder where the door might take us. So I'm asking those I wonder if, I wonder what questions as I'm reading. That's what a good active reader does as they initially read something on the page. So we've got thoughts, questions, ideas with this thought bubble. Another skill, the detective magnifying glass, is making inferences as you read. Inferencing is one of the trickiest things you can do as a reader. It's that reading between the lines, looking at the clues and what that might mean. So for example, if I'd read something that said, um, a girl, let's call her Wendy, Wendy froze to the spot with her eyes wide. I'd flash up this one, the detective magnifying glass and say to children, we need to look at that sentence again a little bit more closely. What does it mean if you're frozen to the spot and your eyes are wide. How would that mean that you are feeling? How is Wendy feeling? We're looking at the clues. The story doesn't tell us. We need to look at the clues to find out what that means. So we talk about being frozen to the spot. You might be scared. You might be surprised. You might be shocked. All those feelings that those words give us a clue about. So that's making inferences using the clues. Another active reading skill that we promote whenever we're discussing stories is the paintbrush. This is imagining or painting a picture in your mind. The posh word that we use is visualisation. So as we're reading page, words on a page, sorry, especially in chapter books when there's not often pictures, 
are we creating a picture in our mind, our own kind of little movie in our mind as we're reading? So if I was reading something like Harry Potter and it talks about Diagon Alley and all the different wonderful wizardry shops that are on Diagon Alley, are we imagining what that looks like? And we might do a quick sketch together and we'll find that all of our different all of our pictures are different but that's okay because we're all using our imagination in different ways. Sometimes as teachers it throws up um, lots of questions if children draw something completely different. It kind of shows this that that child might not be imagining and using the clues that they've read in quite the way that they should do. So this one's really important, painting a picture in our minds. So we would use this together as a class or children might use this in pairs as part of their discussion. So that's another active reading skill. We have got this one, which is our crystal ball. So fortune tellers might use these to look into the future. So this one is helping us with our predicting skills as we're reading actively. Can we read something and try and think what would happen next? So for example, if we read something where a character is up a mountain, and all of a sudden, as they were climbing the mountain, there was a grumbling and a groaning. We might predict then, what could that be? And we might talk about how it could be an avalanche, it could be an earthquake, it could be a stampede of animals. So we're already trying to predict what might happen next. The last reading skill is this one, the active reading skill. We call this, it's a personal favorite of lots of children in school. We call this the word zapper. So we use this one a lot. This is probably the one that we use the most actually. Um, and this one is where the children go zap when they hear a word that they don't quite know the meaning of. And then we use our word zapping skills to help us work out the meaning. I'm going to do a separate video of word zapping skills so that you can use that with your child at home. So that is active reading. So as I said, there's lots of different skills that we model to children as we're reading as adults, and then that children use in pairs or in small groups to help them discuss a text. That means children are really thinking as they're reading. That's what we need to do them on what that's what we need them to do on the surface as they read in order for us to dive deeper and answer questions about what we've read. So the first stage is active reading and making sure children are thinking as they read. The second stage, so we've talked about active reading, the second stage is something called vipers. And I'm gonna do a more in-depth video about vipers coming up. But vipers, it's an acronym and each letter stands for a different skill that a child will be using as they're answering certain question types. And these skills cover all the possible questions that a child would be asked in a test situation. So basically, we're practicing for a test and making sure that children have got those comprehension skills to make them successful in a reading comprehension test. So as I said, active reading is what we want children to do on the surface naturally. So can they do all those thinking skills behind what they're reading? And then vipers, you've got the submarine diving deeper now, is when we dive deeper into what we've read and answer questions about it, specific question types. So next up, there'll be a video about word zapping in more detail and another video about vipers coming right up.